The Play is the Thing with your host, Judy Sleeve. Today's guest from East Hampton Library, Stephen Spataro, otherwise known as Sarah's husband, the most modest man you'll meet. And here's my mom, Judy. Well, hello once again. I'm Judy Sleeve, and I have my good friend Stephen in the hot seat. <laughs> How are you, Stephen? Good. Very good. You look Happy very good back. in that seat. <laughs> and I love your tie. It matches your shirt. Thank you. Thank you. So you are from the library. And uh, yeah. how did you manage during this uh, COVID period? Well, it kind of uh, came up uh, as a big surprise. And we were, we were closed for a few months, but we were still functioning uh, in a virtual uh, format. So That's uh, interesting. We set up a chat so patrons were able to chat. To, um, we were able to help patrons request um, virtual like e-books and audio books. And we set up all programming via Zoom. So uh, people were able to sign up for programs and then get a Zoom link. And it was done virtual, interactive. And um, we found that by doing that, um, not only did we get people in our community to log into programs, but we also got people from other states and other parts of the world. Wow. to log in and to see our programs. And we made connections with people from all over the planet Earth. And one of the connections out of many happened to be um, the individual who was in charge of running the T.E. Lawrence Society in England, in Cloud, Clouds Hill, England. Uh, uh, and it was fantastic. They did a presentation for us with uh, a number of noted authors. And the presentation is actually up on YouTube for, for everyone to watch. And uh, we have another program in the works uh, coming up soon. They're going to discuss T.E. Lawrence's music library and do some filming from uh, in, in inside the, uh, the site. So. Everybody will get a virtual, a little virtual tour over there of the, of, of the house. Also with virtual tours, we have coming up uh, June 23rd, a virtual tour of Teddy Roosevelt's house in Sagamore Hill. And we have coming up in July, a virtual tour of Yellowstone National Park. Wow. And you did this? You figured this out? You made this happen? It was, well, myself and, and uh, um, the other the librarians in, in the, my department, we brainstormed, you know, what programming can we do? What can we bring to the community? And we connected with various programmers. Um, we talked to people in other libraries. We looked to see if there were grants available for programming. And, uh, did you get some grants? We, we did. We did get a few things um, that were provided to us for free uh, through grants that the state got. Mm -hmm. um, all of our programming that we present, we do free of charge So because um, we, we want to bring it to everyone. And we also, um, doing it in a virtual uh, method, we're able to record the programs. We, we always say, you know, if a programmer gives us permission to record and then put it up on YouTube, we add it to and our uh, library YouTube. Everybody is able to do this, so you're gonna, how are you going to get people involved? Um, because like me, I'm, I'm not very savvy with the computer. <laughs> well, what we normally do is um, we would send out the, uh, the, YouTube, the Zoom link to the programmer. 
Sometimes some programmers, they like to do a little test before time, which mm -hmm. is perfectly fine. And uh, I usually have a tech person on the Zoom call. And uh, we have the, the tech person will mute the microphones and uh, we'll open the microphones during the Q&A parts. And uh, if people have questions, some of them type questions in the chat. And we'll have one of the moderators read the questions. But uh, it works, been working out very well, yeah. the system. But we hope to get back to in person programs um, very soon. By probably by the middle of the summertime, we'll be able to do in person again. And I'll also be able to have a camera to uh, live stream those programs for people that wish to watch them from home. Mm -hmm. And this new thing that you're doing, you said uh, it's going to be, you ask people what did you do during uh, the COVID? Yeah, we're calling that the, the pandemic project. It's a, it's a oral history project um, using a software called Memoria. And uh, technically what that uh, entails is an individual would go uh, onto our site. We have a little radio button for memory. It says, tell your story. And there are five questions that are asked. Roughly, um, where do you reside? Um, how did the pandemic affect you? Um, how did your community help you during the pandemic? How did you help your community during the pandemic? Um, we have another question that says, what kept you busy during these shutdowns? Yes. And then the last question is, um, after everything is over, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. And we've been getting a very good response on that. Um, what individuals are able to do is um, record it from home, from their own computer. Uh, if they like to make an appointment, we can make an appointment with them and record it over Zoom. And if they would like to come to the library in person, um, we're doing appointments in person on Wednesdays and Saturdays to do the recording. So and how long is this uh, take like a half hour or yeah the recording is only comes out to about 15 minutes oh. and we will you know if somebody goes over 15 minutes is a little bit longer we can always edit the recording uh -huh. and uh, it's something that you know down the line maybe 20 30 40 years ago f 20 30 40 years from now people may say gee I wonder you know how how individuals got through the pandemic, you know? Yes. I'll, they'll yes. say, let's look at some of these recordings, you know? It's kind of like what uh, uh, NPR has the Story Corps, the oral history projects that they do. It's kind of like that. Like, you know, let's say somebody's grandchild says, you know, my, my grandfather, he was like 25 during that that COVID pandemic of 2020. And let me listen to a recording that he made about it, you know, and this is like, mm -hmm. let's say it's in the year 2100 we're talking now. So people will be able to look back and this will be like recorded for posterity. So uh, suppose somebody comes to you that I want to do this with you, are you going to uh, like ask them what you're going to say and you could edit it and uh, sure that's how it's going to work mm -hmm. because it has to come into a certain time period you have to know the time and since you ask all these questions are you going to say well uh, i'm going to ask you this question and how many how you know how are you going to respond how long does it take well, normally what we've been doing so far is if they go a little bit over, we just we take like the best parts of the uh, uh. the response. You know, if there's like some pauses in there, or if we're doing it outside and you get a plane <laughs> flying overhead, we can we can sweeten that 
fix it. Yeah. And so uh, first you're doing it, it and then you're going to edit it. Mm -hmm. and it's an excellent idea. So far, it, we started it a couple of weeks ago, and we've we've gotten uh, a few, quite a few responses back, and we have a few appointments booked this week, and we hope that throughout the summer, uh, more people would like to make a recording, and uh, we'd be glad to do it. Yeah, well, I certainly would take part because I've been terribly bored. <laughs> And besides playing games and watching old runs, reruns, I started writing about uh, a distant relative, her life story. And uh, I think that would make an interesting, uh, it's would be interesting to listen to. So. And but the, you would have to see the script, and then you would edit it to see which part of it is going to be interesting to talk well, about. Well, that could go definitely in with the pandemic project on the question of um, what kept you busy during the shutdowns. Mm -hmm. But for that, actually, th it might it might come in handy to do a complete separate recording, oh, really? just about about mm. her and her mm. her work as an actress mm. and um, now this this distant relative came to Hollywood you, you had told me was it in the 40s or the 50s yeah no the 40s uh, before because she was famous in the 30s right, right. so and uh, Hollywood asked her to come so she went and they made one movie that I know of called Fabulous Suzanne, but I was, I'd was i love to see it. <laughs> yeah, that was the one I remember. I had noted that on, uh, on my, uh, my movies to look for list. I actually sent that out to somebody in an email to see if yeah. perhaps UCLA had a copy of that, like oh, a, really? a print. Because um, sometimes at UCLA, there are uh, motion picture prints of various films in 16 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And just like um, New York Public in their film archive, you can um, go there and make an appointment to screen a particular film. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're getting back to doing that because during the pandemic, all of that was grounded, but they, uh, they do make appointments if you want to see a particular film mm -hmm. and they'll queue that up for you on the reels uh, because New York Public also they have this room um, called the Schom the Schomburg Library which is actually it's right next to Lincoln Center right next to the Metropolitan Opera that library if you go in there you can request any recording from their vinyl record collection and they'll put you at a station with a pair of headphones and they, there's a little monitor there and you press the start button and the person I, I guess is down in the basement they get a little flash that says you're ready to start the record and they'll put the record on and you can listen to it and these are recordings that haven't been digitized yet that are in their collection so you know there's there's always ways of digging up these things from the past. They're always s in some archive <laughs> somewhere. Yes, and uh, like you said, the library was closed for a period of time, but you were still working, so were you mostly were working from home? Yeah, we, we were we were working from home. We were able to um, get into our phone system, so we were able to answer telephone calls, and we were getting emails through our general reference email, so we were able to respond back and make telephone calls mm -hmm. through that. We also had a list of um, people in the community, and we gave them a phone call to see how they were doing, um, 
what we did was when as soon as we came back before we opened we started curbside so oh. people were able to call us email us or go on to a sheet that we had set up put titles that they wanted and we would pull them from the shelf and have them ready for them to pick up and we had a table out front it said curbside pickup and people would come and pick up the bag with their name on it with their stuff in there mm. when they were finished with it and they returned it they just dropped it into a returns drop mm. and that's how we functioned as a curbside set up that sounds great <laughs> until until we were able to reopen the doors uh, last summer and uh, we've been open ever since and uh, are you still showing movies i remember i went to see several movies well the last movie actually we showed was in january of 2020 and then we had to stop because mm -hmm. of of the uh of, of, of the pandemic but there is light at the end of the tunnel we're getting back to in person <laughs> so i intend to this summer um, we'll have at least a movie or two this summer before the summer is out and then when we get into the fall we'll be we'll be back to normal we'll have screenings um, up there on the calendar again well that's good news good news and uh, I'm going to mention it again that uh, I put this makeup on that's why I look so good and it was your wife <laughs> who gave me the foundation, which is a wonderful product. It's uh, From artistry. <laughs> it, that's not only it looks good when you put it on, but it feels good and it's made out of a very good uh, material. To, so your wife, Sarah Bedell, mm -hmm. Yep. was very sweet and she went on YouTube and demonstrated how to use it. I really she, enjoyed watching She her. does demos Friday nights at 7.30. This Friday yeah. night at 7.30? Every, every Friday at 7.30 she does a, a demo um, and um, will demonstrate a different aspect of the makeup line that they have. Um, she might be doing demos we talked about. I, I had told her, I said, oh, maybe we should do, because during the pandemic, we did a few cooking demos. Cooking, and I we, love cooking. And we put cooking. those up on, <laughs> on YouTube. And I said, maybe we should go back to doing a few cooking demos. You know, like she did um, a very simple salad that was very robust with, with apples and different different vegetables and um, we've got things growing now like we have kale and thyme and basil so you know I said why don't we do some more you know cooking related like we <laughs> could do a pan seared fish dish you know and put the uh, rosemary and the thyme <laughs> on top of you it. You like to cook? Yeah, well, I have to do my definitely do my share of cooking. Yeah, and come up with new recipes. Some some good, some uh. not so good. Usually, know when it's not good when the cat doesn't want it, because <laughs> the cat the cat will eat anything. Would eat anything. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. You, you I, have I, one cat. I have one one cat that it does not. If someone is in the kitchen, she can be in a deep sleep and one eye will open right up. <laughs> and she'll be like, I, I mean, I, sometimes what I'll do is I'll get, I'll get uh, Nova locks from the supermarket and I might, you know, put it on like a, a, a roll with cream cheese or <laughs> I may put it on with eggs. All you have to do is just s slice that Nova locks bag open a little bit she knows and she just like huh. it's almost like she disappeared and then reappeared in the kitchen <laughs> and was right that there like you know want some of that oh that reminds me we used to have a cat and every time um, 
the can opener made that noise, she came running. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they, they <laughs> the think that opener. it's their, their food, you know, their, their tuna. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, the, uh, we did, um, we, we had put out a shrimp cocktail Aww. one night on uh, the table and I had, you know, we were getting the other things ready for dinner. I turned my back for, for two uh. minutes. She stretched herself out up onto the table stuck her paw into one of the shrimp and <laughs> pulled it right out oh of the shrimp <laughs> ring. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, you have to be careful. <laughs> but uh, yeah. cooking cooking demos is definitely, you know, a good thing to You can even uh, write to. a cookbook. You know, we've talked about that before. We have discussed the possibilities of doing a cookbook. You know, just of the recipes that we've made over the years that were things that we experimented with. Well, you have to try it out mm -hmm. <laughs> and then write it down. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different ways of preparing a meal. Uh, I've been watching a few of those uh, cooking shows on uh, YouTube. And uh, I noticed that sometimes if you want the, uh, you want to stretch it and talk like for five minutes or ten minutes, it all depends what ingredients mm. <laughs> you want to put in there. There's a lot of different ways of uh, preparing the same dish. Yeah, it's like, you know, this way people used to uh, make lasagna, you know, the old school way with forming the, uh, the, 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 the the noodles and putting it all together and everything and then they had the no boil lasagna they came out with and you know then that that made things a little bit easier you know you're able to bake it mm -hmm. but there are some people like with eggplant well they'll make it on the stove top you know with all of their oils and everything and then there are others that like to bake the eggplant you know and um, you know it's not as as oily as if you do it, you know, in the in the frying pan. But I, the way I look at it is, I I, I eat it both ways, so it doesn't yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah, eggplant. This is a very healthy and tasty dish. Yes, there's an eggplant parmesan. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we've we've done that before. I mean, we've yeah. Also, we've used different red wines to cook with but we're trying to with we're trying to shy away from meat and just be as you know Mediterranean right. as possible to, to keep waistline so down. Uh, do you want to uh, just leave the audience the people who are watching what they should do to be able to partake in your new project Oh, well, if, if you'd like to um, do your recording of uh, your memories of the pandemic, you can go on to easthamptonlibrary.org, which is the East Hampton Library's homepage. And right about the middle of the page, there's a little box that says, Memoria, tell your story. And if you click that, it gives you the prompts to do your recording. Um, it has five questions there, and each question is set to about two to three minutes. Uh, and then if you do the recording and you feel like, ah, I'd like to do it again, there's, a, uh, there's a, a redo, so you can do it a second time. That's uh, under, under preview. And when you get it to the point where you really like it, you think it's good, say, yeah, this sounds good. This is about makes sense and then you want to submit it you just click the little submit button and then the library uh, will receive it it won't go live to the public uh, it will look at it first and if we have to make some edits and clean it up a little bit if there's some background noise we could do that um, but if you'd like it to be placed uh, on the public page there's a little um, link at the bottom. 
that says, you know, I, I consent to having it put on the, uh, the Memria um, East Hampton Library page. And if you click that, then uh, we'll put this nice video up there. And uh, it'll be there for posterity, for all to listen to for years and years to come. Um, you know, just like with back many, many years ago, uh, when people were worked on whaling ships and people were, were using whaling logs uh, in, the, in the 1800s, there were recordings done. Now, these recordings were done on open reel tape of people and their experiences. And we had somebody back at that time, 50 years ago, that would make these recordings. And uh, luckily, due with technology, we've been able to take those recordings of the days of whaling and the days from uh, and uh, Excuse me. Uh, if you want to leave the phone number for the people who can call the library and if they want any information or could sure, have questions. Sure. Yeah, they can call 631-324-0222. That's hit easy hit enough. Hit extension 3. Uh, or they could just email reference at easthamptonlibrary.org and we'd be glad to make an appointment. And uh, all of our previous oral histories that were done in the past on tapes, many of them uh. have been digitized now. So uh, we have a little link on our website called uh, Historic Long Island. And uh, if you click that, it'll bring you into mm -hmm. the world of the past of Long Island. Okay, just for the last breath, uh, my friend Joyce loves you the books she's reading that she's getting from the East Hampton Library. She said she could make the letters as big as she wants, and it was a big success, so other people could read books. What do you call that, e-books? E-books, yes. We have yeah. e-books for Kindle and iPad, and yeah. you can read them on your phone. We also have audio books. Yeah. Through, uh, through live so library. Thank you so much, Stephen, for coming to be my playmate. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Always happy to be here. Okay, can you believe it? We did it.